Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Azam Khan. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Time is running out for Hong Kong footballers to overturn a two-goal deficit against Japan in the semi-final of the Asian Games. Chaos in Washington as Kevin McCarthy becomes the first U.S. House Speaker to be ousted through a no-confidence vote. And Hong Kong bags a seventh gold in Hangzhou after cyclist Yang Xianyu clinches the women's road race. We start with Asian Games action. The historic run by Hong Kong men's football team is hanging by a thread. They are trailing Japan by two goals in the semi-final, which is underway in Hangzhou. Japan dominated possession in the first half, and the Samurai Blue got on the scoreboard after 23 minutes. Hong Kong forward Sun Ming Him failed to clear the ball during a set piece, allowing Shun Ayukawa to fire home with ease. The SAR fell into a deeper hole just minutes after the interval. Koshiro Sumi's attempt was blocked by the goalie, but Shota Hino latched on to the rebound to make it 2-0 for Japan. Stay tuned for more Asian Games coverage. First locally, the observatory says it will issue the standby signal number one once Typhoon Koinu reaches within 800 kilometers of the region. Koinu is expected to skirt past the southern part of Taiwan and move towards the coastal waters of eastern Guangdong tomorrow. It will then move westwards, edging closer to the vicinity of the Pearl River estuary. Meanwhile, it will weaken gradually under the influence of the northeast monsoon. The impact of Koinu on the local weather will depend on how fast it weakens and its distance from the Pearl River estuary. It is uh, still a bit too early to say whether a higher tropical cyclone warning signal is required at this stage. Koinu's outer subsiding air has brought sizzling conditions to Hong Kong. The mercury hit 34.6 degrees at the observatory's headquarters this afternoon, making it the hottest October day on record. As Koinu approaches Taiwan, more than 100 flights were cancelled while work and classes have been suspended in the southern region. Waves several meters high pounded the shores of Green Island across eastern Taitung province. Koinu, which means puppy in Japanese, is expected to make landfall on the southeastern coast tomorrow morning. It is then expected to weaken after crossing the island's southern tip and become a tropical storm. But southern cities, Kaohsiung and Tainan, were not taking chances and suspended all work and classes tonight. For the second time in three months, two light rail trains collided as they departed from a terminus. Three passengers escaped with minor injuries after the latest accident in Yunlong Station this morning, and the MTR did not rule out Human error. Janice Lowe reports. Commuters in northwestern New Territories had their journeys disrupted this morning after two light rail trains collided at low speed at Yunlong Station. One of the trains was serving Route 761P and had 120 passengers on board when it departed for Tianshui Wai. Just as it moved off the platform, Another empty train also set off. One of them allegedly failed to give way, resulting in the accident. MTR technicians soon arrived at the terminus to inspect the damage and, more importantly, come up with a plan to move the trains back into position. Three passengers were sent to Pok Oi Hospital to treat minor injuries. Four light rail routes were diverted as emergency repairs were carried out at the station. The MTR provided free shuttle buses for affected passengers and light rail services gradually resumed by early afternoon. The railway operator is now investigating the incident and did not rule out human error as a possible cause. The accident this morning resembled another blunder three months ago when two trains collided inside the Tunmun Ferry Pier terminus. No one was injured in that incident, 
but both train drivers were suspended pending an investigation. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. Turning overseas, police in Bangkok say the teenager who allegedly shot dead two people in a popular shopping mall had used a modified toy gun. Assistant Police Chief Samran Noalma said confirmed gun itself was not illegal, but the device was modified so it could fire real bullets. He pledged to look into regulations on toy air guns. Authorities also confirmed the 14-year-old suspect had a history of mental illness and suffered a breakdown after skipping medication. Shoppers inside the popular Siam Paragon Mall fled in horror yesterday after gunshots rang out. Two women from China and Myanmar were killed, with five more injured, two of whom foreigners. For the first time in history, the U.S. House of Representatives Speaker has been ousted after losing a no-confidence vote. Kevin McCarthy's tumultuous nine-month tenure came to an end after eight hardline Republicans turned on him. On this vote, the yeas are 216, the nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. In an extraordinary and unprecedented development, U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was ousted after losing a no-confidence vote. It comes just days after McCarthy struck a deal with Democrats to fund government agencies, avoiding a federal shutdown. Kevin McCarthy is a feature of the swamp. He has risen to power by collecting special interest money and redistributing that money in exchange for favors. Uh, we are breaking the fever now, and we should elect a speaker who's better. Even after pleasing the White House with the funding bill, no Democrat was willing to back McCarthy in the no-confidence vote. But the man remained defiant, saying he wouldn't change a thing. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. The seeds of discord were sown months ago when a far-right minority within the Republican camp tried to prevent McCarthy from taking the gavel in the first place. The representative from California only assumed the chair after a record 15 rounds of votes in a debacle which left the party red-faced. Now he has made history again by becoming the first House Speaker to step down. With no clear successor to oversee the Republican-controlled House, the conservative leadership must now find an alternative quickly or risk further turmoil. The drama compounds uncertainties in Washington, with the government still facing a federal shutdown next month unless a permanent bill is passed. At least 21 people, including several children, have been killed after the coach they were riding in went off a bridge near the Italian city of Venice. Police are still investigating how the tourist bus lost control. An unspeakable tragedy at a popular tourist destination. A bus carrying tourists broke through a flyover barrier near the Italian city of Venice. The coach plunged nearly 15 meters onto railway tracks below and burst into flames upon impact. Local media reports suggested the methane gas tank on the hybrid bus first exploded, setting batteries on fire. At least 21 people were killed, including several children. Five Ukrainians, one German, and the Italian driver were among the deceased. At least 18 others were injured, four of them in critical condition. Dozens of firefighters and emergency responders swarmed the scene, desperately searching for victims. Venice Mayor Luigi Brugnaro paid a visit to the crash site. He described the scene as apocalyptic. Police are now investigating how the bus driver lost control of the vehicle, including the possibility of him losing consciousness at the wheel, as there were no brake marks on the road. In the meantime, 
A reception point staffed with psychologists has been set up at a nearby hospital to provide support for the victims' families. Hong Kong stocks headed south for a fourth straight session while the mainland markets were closed for a holiday. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index closed down 135 points. Top 10 active stocks, AIA Insurance finished up $1, Tencent down $3. Ping An was down $0.40, cents. the Hong Kong Exchange also down $0.40. Cents. Forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euro is at 8.22, the Canadian dollar at 5.71. And over in the UK markets, London FTSE is currently down 4 points. Team Hong Kong bagged its seventh gold in the Asian Games. Yang Xian Yu fended off South Korea's defending champion to clinch the city's first ever victory in a cycling road race. Sachin Kutfi has the story. 29 riders contested the 139.7 kilometer women's road race. The pack was guided by a safety car for the first 2.3 kilometers before the actual race got underway. Hong Kong's Yang Chian Yu was right at the back of the peloton in the initial stage of the mostly flat course. Crossing the Chian Dao Lake Bridge, the riders were still huddled in one group, except for Yuldos Hashimi of Afghanistan, who tried to break away. More than 50 kilometers from the finish line and in wet conditions, Ayustina Delia Priyatna of Indonesia opened up a two-minute lead from the chasing pack. Her early attack proved to be in vain as she was caught up with 30 kilometers to go. After staying in the peloton for another 15 kilometers, Yang tried to leave her opponents behind with an attack in an uphill section. But the Hong Kong rider found herself in company. South Korea's defending champion Na Arum decided to join her rival. Both riders traded leads as they tried to maintain a healthy distance from the peloton. Across the last bend and into the long straight down the finish line, Na carefully gauged the competition before unleashing everything for the final sprint. She tried to squeeze Yang to the side. But the SAR rider snatched gold in a photo finish after 3 hours, 36 minutes and 7 seconds. Fellow Hong Kong rider and reigning University Games champion Lee Zi Wing finished 8th just one second behind. Sachin Kartvi, HKIBC. Hong Kong's Ho Tso Lok bowed out in the squash semi-finals with a bronze medal. The defending champion lost to compatriot Chan Sin Yuk, who is now in contention to win gold for the SAR. Here's Sachin Kartvi again. In an all-Hong Kong affair, Chan Sin Yuk and Ho Zi Lok faced off in the women's singles semi-final. While Chan was looking to make it to the final for the first time, Ho was defending her title. A dominant Chan did not let anything get past her in the first game. She opened the account by winning 11-4. Ho, on the other hand, tried to take control from the center of the box and restrained her own movement. That strategy did not work as Chan kept up the pressure and scored six straight points in game two. She moved a step closer to victory with a backhand smash to take the second 11-5. Ho went on the offensive in the final game, but Chan held on to win it 11-8 and complete a 3-0 sweep in the best of five contest. Ho gets bronze as consolation, while Chan will weigh for gold tomorrow. Their Hong Kong teammate Henry Leung was up against Sauro Goshal of India in the men's singles semis. Leung, who won silver in Jakarta five years ago, found the going tough initially as Goshal blitzed through the first two games, 11-2 and 11-1. The SAR player eventually found his rhythm but had to settle for a bronze after Goshal entered the contest by taking the third game, 11-6. Earlier in the day, 
The Hong Kong duo of Lee Ka Yi and Wong Chi Him made a promising start against India in the mixed doubles semis. The SAR players wrapped up the opening game 11-7 after 10 minutes. But their opponents Deepika Palikal Karthik and Harinder Sandhu returned the favour in the second game to force a decider. Both teams gave it their best, but Wong and Lee faltered down the stretch, losing 9-11 and making do with a bronze. Sachin Katwe, HKIBC. On to the weather now. It'll be mainly fine tomorrow with isolated showers. Temperatures will range between 28 and 34 degrees. Expect slightly cooler weather over the weekend. That's our main news for Wednesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Azam Khan. Thanks for watching. Good night.